Aw, oh, man, I really want a copy of Pokemon Heart Gold, but look at this! I don't have any kidneys left! Although I might know a way to obtain it. Oh man, that was a lot of work. But here it is. What? No, I'm not playing it, I just want to look at it. There's a lot of beauty to be found in the simple designs of Pokemon box art. Mainline, I should say, because this is a whole I spy picture. And paired with their logos, there's some pretty cool stuff here. Again, mainline, I should say. And we've already looked at all there is to see from Gens 1 to 5. There were, of course, some ups and downs, Diamond and Pearl, but this is a new Pokemon era. An era that's widely regarded as being the start of the franchise's downfall. Oh no. But I'm sure we'll be fine. Let's take a look at the art of more Pokemon logos and box art. Pokemon X and Y can be considered the start of the series' modern era, and these box arts aren't a bad first impression. Xerneas and Yveltal are front and center, big and vibrant. This time around, there's much more of a contrast between the two legendaries, though. Before, both versions would have a big, bulky, menacing monster up front. While here, Xerneas remains elegant and stoic, while Yveltal looks more dangerous and unpredictable. This point isn't necessarily to be credited to the box art itself, as it's just using the legendaries who in and of themselves exhibit that contrast, but it still allows the covers to be unique. Entering into background territory, we have some pretty good ones. Xerneas has a soft, bright, luscious forest, lights beaming from the treetops, all framed in white with the shape of an X. You know, standing for Zatu. Eviltal, on the other hand, has swirling clouds, the sky displaying a range of colors, all in a darkened frame creating a Y. You know, standing for Zatu. The logo itself, though, I'm a little bit more mixed on. The X and Y part look great flat, but they have the addition of Xerneas' horns and Yveltal's wings and tail respectively. And it's good! It all works! This is the problem area. Why does the Pokémon logo have this outline? Why do they look like iron and bronze? I guess it makes the logo stick out, but at what cost? Maybe it's just me, but it looks cheap. Like, the Pokémon Y one almost reminds me of the Sonic Adventure logo. Okay, maybe not that bad. The Japanese logos have really been picking up since their update in black and white, you know, two games ago. So these logos are in 3D! because the games are in 3D! This is a 2DS. This circle here is back to the Pokeball design, and consequently, Pokemon is back at the bottom. The text itself shares the same texture between versions, just with different colors. In regards to the weird metallic textures though, they look way better here with the added depth. This logo was made with this detail in mind, while here, it was just tacked onto the pre-existing one. These logos also work in the Mega Evolution symbol, adding a very nice small burst of color, while also advertising the fact Charizard's back now guys, remember him when you were a kid? He looks cool now! Jumping back to remakes, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. And jumping right into said remakes, Groudon and Kyogre look awesome. The former's magma coursing through it gives a new brightness to the Groudon we know. And Kyogre's transparent portions with the lights coming from the inside give off the vibes of some deep sea creature. The backgrounds are great too. A fiery eruption perfectly displays Groudon's strength. And Kyogre sure is in the sea. There's even an extra detail of the frame being a red or blue stainless steel texture calling back to the original Japanese box art. The logos are pretty great too. The Pokemon part has the sort of metallic outline X and Y had, but without the odd texture making it look a lot nicer. Plus, Omega Ruby is written in a far more jagged, rocky font because land, and Alpha Sapphire has a more smooth, wavy font because water. The one part I don't quite like about them is their Nintendo 64-ass textures just pasted onto the sides. They put Lethal Lava Land in this game? But overall, good. Great, even. The Japanese logos here are done in the same style as the originals, with Pokemon back at the bottom, the simple silver outline, and the Pokeball back here, too. All, of course, in three. The text is a little more fancy this time around, with a new cut gem texture, and where the Mega Evolution symbol was on the X and Y box art, there's the red or blue orbs. The continued integration of a game's gimmick or other important element into the logo is a really nice detail. Spoilers, this does mostly stick around from here on out. One thing that doesn't stick around is this. The Japanese, Korean, and European releases of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came in colored cases. Plenty of people still clamor for the colored cartridges to come back, like what they did for the first three generations, and I guess this is the closest we get. Now, why didn't we get these cases in the Americas? Because I guess in 2014, we did not deserve happiness. Gen 7 is next with Sun and Moon. Solgaleo and Lunala look pretty nice. I mean, it's just their stalker, but we've seen before that that doesn't immediately make a box bad. Well, then again... The backgrounds are kind of simple too, but they manage to be really pretty. The beams emanating from the sun or moon are going in the opposite direction of the legendaries, giving a nice sense of movement. And even the simple element of the Pokémon facing the direction of the sun or moon is cool on its own. The glue that holds all this together is the sea of stars filling out the rest of the background. What a tease. I do want to say, Moon's box art might look a little bit better just due to the increased color variety with some pink accents and the like, while Sun is a majority orange and yellow. The logos themselves are really slick and stylish, and honestly, I think Sun and Moon are some of the best titles in the series, so that certainly helps too. Now for the logo itself, 
Pokemon and Sun or Moon are placed onto one shape with a cosmic look, with a little swirl in the middle and everything. The stylized icons look great too, mostly flat with a very slight gradient. If you look at them the right way, you can even see some very simplified versions of the legendaries. What, you don't see it? Look. The Japanese logos have a little bit more to look at here. The traditional Pokeball on the Poe character is a little meatier now. Pokemon is now just sitting at the top. Okay. And I want to bring special attention to how the version names are illustrated here. They just look super nice, with a nice black or white body and slight color on the edges. The one for Moon in particular looks like something you'd see in the Ultra games, just with that sleek dark stylishness, but we'll get to that. Of course, following the new trend, there's this diamond here, which we can recognize as a Z-Crystal. They each use the opposite version's color scheme, adding a nice bit of contrast, though it's weird how non-specific they are. This looks more like the Iceum Z and the Pekinium Z. There was also a theory revolving around these crystals before the game came out. A handful of people thought these would be Burst Hearts, from Pokemon Ray Burst. You know, the manga where humans essentially fuse with their Pokemon? Yeah, apparently that was going to be Gen 7's gimmick? Imagine. Gen 7 is next, with Sun and Moon. You see, the joke there is that many people see the Ultra games as just retreads of Sun and Moon, but they actually change up quite a bit, making for their own worthwhile experience. That being said, the Ultra games are like if you took Sun and Moon's box art and just made it Necrozma. Everything here relates to Necrozma somehow. Solgaleo and Lunala? Necrozma. The text background? Black, like Necrozma. The logos? Necrozma. The background light and color? Being absorbed? By Necrozma. The addition of all this black does look really nice, but there's really not too much more to say? It's Sun and Moon with this guy on top. I guess it is a little busy, but it's not too bad. I'd rather have that than... Japanese games are the same. Original logo with a black backing now. The Z-Crystal though was replaced with Necrozma's crystal face? Point being, that's also Necrozma now. Also, they brought back the color cases like for Oras. They also brought back the cool feature of the Americas not getting them. Let's go over to Let's Go. I'm conflicted about these ones. The art of Pikachu and Eevee look great, with really well done shading and textures, almost reminiscent of the old Sugimori art in a sense. Like the rescans, not this propaganda. The lighter and looser line art too makes them stand out, and I kinda wanna pet both of them. Well, do I have news for me? The Pokeball on the bottom right adds a nice splash of color, and it does hint a little bit towards the game's focus on catching. The logos are pretty nice too. The word Go has another Pokeball in it, really hammering in that gimmick. You're going to use motion controls, and you're going to like it. But also maybe calling to the Japanese logos up to this point. And Pikachu Pikachu and Eevee have a sort of arts and crafts look to them, fitting for these simpler games. And of course, the tails on the exclamation points. That's just cute. This is all great! So what is it that I'm conflicted about? This background. This background looks bad. Really bad. It is the most generic empty field and blue sky I've ever seen. I'm not joking when I say it looks like the Windows XP background. But worse, there's hardly any style. The field goes directly into the sky with no trees, not even a hill. It looks really muted, which is odd, because the Let's Go games have really nice colors. The only bit of life that's here is four pieces of grass blowing in the breeze. There is an extended version of this art with some trees way off to the side, but why even bother at that point? Honestly, maybe it's just me, but I would have preferred the classic color with slight texture look over this fan-made mock-up. And I say that knowing the fan-made mock-ups look better. Like Pikachu and Eevee aren't even in the grass, they float above it! <sighs> The Japanese art is the same as expected. The Pocket Monsters text this time has a grassy texture here though, but it's also stylized almost identically to the text all the way back in Gen 1. It's relatively flat and even the more jagged edges come back. This is the kind of detail that I would have loved to see in the English releases. Another nice detail is how the tails are properly integrated into the Japanese characters. I guess they just couldn't replicate that in English, so they slapped some surprise into the title. Sword and Shield are next, and... Huh. I mean, it's not their stock art, but Zashin and Zamazenta still look kind of boring here. I mean, the stoic glance upwards is always cool, it's practically a staple of these covers now. And Zashin and Zamazenta are cool designs too, like Dog with Sword? You can't surpass that. I think if they were placed onto a more interesting background, I would feel better about how they looked. It's just white with some flowing cyan and magenta lines. They sort of trail the legendary as if they came rushing into action, just like in lore, but that could be conveyed far better with their posing, if that really was the intent anyway. The logos here are okay. Sword has sharp, slick text with a slash through it. Look, it's even doing that anime thing where the slights have slowly sheer away from each other. And Shield is more blocky and sturdy looking, with some points at the side almost like it's giving or receiving a blow in a stylized way. This is all over top of a cartoon sword and shield with a canine head slapped on there. 
they're stylized enough with a soft gradient and minor detailing. One missed opportunity though is that they don't look much like the rusted sword and rusted shield items, but that's just nitpicking at this point. God knows sword and shield hasn't been nitpicked enough. The Japanese logos here are... What? They... are practically identical to the English logos, barring the language of course. Well, the trademark's placed differently, I guess. The Pocket Monsters logo is stylized like the Pokemon logo. I mean, it's not bad, but it looks a lot less stylish than things like Sun and Moon or Black and White. There is the addition of the Galar Gym Challenge logo, which is a nice touch. Odd that there was nothing to do with Dynamax, but I guess it doesn't really have an icon in the same way Mega Evolution does. The weird part is, this wasn't a permanent shift. This was the only mainline game to stylize the Pocket Monsters logo like this. But before we move on, I want to look at a different logo. At one point, an early build of Pokemon Sword was leaked. It was dated to late December 2017, and it was very unfinished. Like, whoa. What is this? What? Getting back on track, this early build came with an early title screen. And on this early title screen, there's a Mega Rayquaza, which is such a tease, like why'd they do that? But there's also an early Japanese logo and it looks great. This is far more in line with everything that came before, but it looks so slick. The stainless steel backing of the rich blue text, lights flashing inside like cameras from the stadium crowd, Pokemon written slick and professionally up top, the sword icon looking far more refined and clean, and it's all brought together by the glow it has. This is such an incredible logo. It's a shame it never got to see the light of day. And for the most part, this style of logo has been retired for the time being, aside from this next instance. If you could even count it here. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were an odd case for box art, especially in regards to being a remake. Red and Green, and even Red and Blue, had primitive box art in terms of how Charizard and Venusaur were drawn. They looked good, but come Fire Red Leaf Green, this just wasn't the style anymore. So just using updated illustrations of those same Pokemon works just fine. Exact same case with Heart Gold Soul Silver, just using more current art of Ho-Oh and Lugia. By Gen 3, the Pokemon art style was mostly finalized and solidified, for the Pokemon themselves at least. The characters still looked somewhat... off. So Oras didn't really have updated pieces of Groudon and Kyogre. Coincidentally, the two of them just happened to get new forms in the game. Perfect, use those. For BDSP though, they couldn't do that. The most recent key art for these Pokemon was used all the way back in the original games. So they opted to make unique 3D renders of them, which is a thing that hasn't been seen before on mainline game box art. They don't look bad, really. There's just a lot of odd choices here. The models are clean and well lit, and the lights beaming from their Diamond and Pearl look good. The poses are... okay. Far more interesting than the originals, at least, but they don't look all too ferocious. They look more like they're singing, or they stub their toe. And there's also Dialga's neck folds, which I don't think I wanted to see. The textures here are odd, too. Dialga's metallic bits look appropriately nice and... metallic. And Palgia has some smoother bits with a bit of shine. But then their bodies proper? They look... Fuzzy? Maybe not fuzzy, actually, but they have this sort of bumpy... scuffed... I don't, I don't... I don't even know what to call this, but it doesn't look right. The background is pretty close to the originals. The beam of light going from white to blue or pink is still there, but it's vertical now. It is a bit more hidden with the legendaries combined with the aspect ratio, though. Also, the smoky texture on the black background was redone. I do think, though, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts in this case. Despite all the weird elements, this art looks good. The logos aren't anything extravagant, but they're still kinda neat. They look slick, they have some style, the contrast between the sharp diamond logo and the smooth pearl logo is neat, and the font here is the same as it was for the originals. Oh, how faithful! The Japanese logos are pretty faithful too, they're almost identical to the originals, but they have a little bit more color, and the Pokeball has depth. And of course, Brilliant and Shining were added. But yeah, in the end, this really was Diamond and Pearl box art remade. Now, before we step into Legends Arceus, there are plenty of people who will debate whether this game is mainline or a spin-off. So, do I include it here? Ignoring the fact that I just said I was talking about it. Well, officially, it is considered mainline. This official graphic here puts it alongside the other main series titles for one, and in marketing too, it was often called a next step in the Pokemon series, the Pokemon series' latest game, or something along those lines. And even if this is incorrect and it's actually a spin-off, you can't stop me. I'm just gonna come out and say it. This box art looks incredible. Maybe I'm just saying that because it's something new compared to the Pokemon on the cover that we're used to, but I still think it's a great cover in its own right. Sure, it follows a trend that many open world or semi open world games use, where it's their characters staring off into the distance, but whatever, it looks good. The big focal point of the game's story, Mount Coronet, is front and center. Clouds enveloping the top and even somewhat hiding the Temple of Sinnoh. The red gradient up there makes this the box's focal point, too, even further pushing its importance, especially considering in game, it's always over you. 
At the foot of the mountains lies a vast field. You know, that open world stuff. The bottom of the box is busy and lively. Rei and Akari grasping their Pokeballs, ready for adventure. Surrounded by a variety of Pokemon with a wide range of personality. Hey, Pikachu's even looking back at the viewer because he knows he's a mascot. This whole piece is so colorful, with the variety of Pokemon, Rei and Akari's vibrant red scarves, Mount Coronet's vibrant red self, the rich blues and greens, you can even see a very soft painted texture, particularly on the terrain. And even the logo looks fresh. Pokemon and Legends are put together like this, really suggesting future games in the series. Or so I can dream anyway. This Pokemon logo is a nice blue with a soft gradient and off-white outline, and it looks so good. In a sense, this logo feels more... mature than this one? Ah, oh, they grow up so fast. It only took 23 years. And it works great alongside Legends' soft green and clean lettering, made more interesting by the small jagged ends. And of course, Arceus. Written in a sort of brush calligraphy style. You know, like Rhythm Heaven. It perfectly fits the setting of the game, plus the style it was going for in some places. Also, remember when the game was first revealed and it was off-center? Why'd they do that? It all comes together. Pokemon Legends Arceus' artwork makes me proud of being a fan of this multi-billion dollar multimedia titan. Oh yes, Mr. Pikachu, I will consume media. Now, what about the Japanese logo? You're looking at it. Yeah, it just uses the English Pokemon logo. I guess this is the natural evolution of Sword and Shield adapting its style, but... It's not right. The only difference between these boxes, aside from, like, the age rating, is Arceus being written in the appropriate language. I guess the Pokemon Legends logo is just so good and brandable that it's universal. The most current games, Scarlet and Violet. We're going out with a bang here. Coridon and Maridon are great legendaries, and this art of them is great. And no, it's not just their stock renders. This artwork is large, refined, their colors are great, they have subtle texture. The background even slightly warps around them to make them stand out more. And what about this background? We're back to the textured color design. These ones look somewhat scaly or leathery. Wait, and there's a jagged gold frame, because these are the Scarlet and Violet books from the game. This totally makes up for the rusted sword and shield thing. Having the case itself being a full interpretation of a proper in-game plot element is super cool to me. Sure, if the Scarlet and Violet books weren't a thing, these cases would lose a lot of the wow factor, but they still look at least okay on their own. These logos are pretty elaborate. When the games were first revealed, we thought the logos would just be this, but the frame really ties it all together. Said frame being a further reference to the Scarlet and Violet books, with the corners and stylized Legend up top, all the gold has a slight sparkle to it, and even the Scarlet and Violet are cool. Like, the words. Scarlet's font is pretty loose, varying thickness, curls that almost give off reptilian vibes like this guy, and the triangular pattern all make for a fitting prehistoric vibe. Violet's logo, in contrast, looks properly futuristic. Blocky, consistent text, lines between the purple to make for a screen-like effect, and white specks floating around in there too. You know, because that's what happens in the future. Both of those words are surrounded by this harsh, bright yellow, yet somehow it manages to fit with both cases. Good. The, 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 that's good, it's good-ass cases. The Japanese logo this time is another sort of reinvention. It's shiny, gold, and sparkling to fit in with the rest of the book theming, as well as the game's whole treasure thing, even with a terrestrial crystal here to display the gimmick. Plus, the jaggy text is back too. Wait, is that Gen 1 nostalgia pandering again? Well, that might have been all the mainline Pokemon box art. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, it was. But we are far from done. Since Oras, they've released double packs, containing a copy of each version of the game in a big box. Except Let's Go. No Let's Go bundles except for this bigger box with an ad on it. The Oras one was cool. The artworks are separated by steam, resulting from this clash. The Japanese one, or ones, I don't even know what this is. Sun and Moon is just the art next to each other, but them forming a full moon is still neat. And if you're feeling really spicy, you can get the variant with 200 Pokeballs, ooh. The Japanese release has the games next to each other instead of stacked, making for a horizontal box. Ultra Games, same thing. Oh, and the box art's the same too. Sword and Shield are vertical, giving the dogs more room to breathe. The Japanese pack is this again, but with a bit more space at the bottom. BDSP puts Dialga and Palkia themselves next to each other, and that's cool. Japan does this too, but side by side. And Scarlet and Violet just looks really cramped. Free them. As for Japanese, yeah, this. Also, steelbooks! Some games had these in, like, bundles and stuff. Oras had separate steelbooks, just being the art without the logo and stuff. Also these figurines, which you know I love. The Alola games had individual steelbooks alongside one for both, putting the covers on each side. The one for the Ultra games strangely has modified box art, though, with a very simplified background, removing Ultra Necrozma and putting this void up here instead of having the color being sucked away. It's cool that it's different, but it's a bit of a downgrade if you ask me. There's also separate steelbooks and some pretty sleek golden stuff, too. Let's Go did have a steelbook, but it was sold separately from the game, which is odd. The art is nice, having Pikachu and Eevee using their unique moves on a grey background. And of course, it's got Eevee using Batty Bad. Perfect. 
Sword and Shield has these ones, but also this slick gold steel book. The dogs even slightly protrude out, making it just that little bit more interesting. BDSP's got one, it's the double pack art of these guys side by side with a Pokeball on the back. You could have at least pretended to care about Platinum. Legends has a nice steel book, being a slightly different perspective of the original art. The field below isn't visible, and Mount Coronet is way bigger. We even get to see Rolf and Staraptor off to the side now. Shinx, though, still gets lost in the void. I want to bring special attention to the Korean steelbook here, though. The front cover is the same as the game, but the back has a really cute scene of the protagonist at camp. I also want to bring attention to the art inside of the case. The other steelbooks have just the region map or some pattern, but this is another fantastic piece of art. Oras actually had a pretty cool one, too. Finally, Scarlet and Violet have their individual cases with the appropriate school logo on the back, plus their own gorgeous gold version. That's still not it. Sword and Shield, as well as Scarlet and Violet, have DLC, and they had releases with the DLC on the cartridge, of course, with appropriate cases. Gen 8 had these collages. It's just the art moved up a bit, a really generic looking plus game expansion pass, and they slapped some green and yellow down there for Calyrex and Urshifu. Subway. This doesn't look very good. It looks like an ad, not a game I'd want to buy. There's even this disclaimer down here telling you that you don't need to do anything else because the pass is on the cart. Like, thanks, that's why I'm buying this now. You also still need to download a patch so you can access the DLC, so why they didn't mention that, I have no clue. The Japanese case is mostly similar with some bizarre small differences. This here says plus expansion pass instead of writing the game's name twice. Like what else was I expecting? No, I want Pokemon Shield with the Pokemon Sword expansion pass, thank you. And for no good reason Calyrex and Urshifu are different sizes between boxes. I guess that whole the art is the same from here on out thing was a lie. Scarlet and Violet plus the hidden treasure of Area Zero though is so much nicer. There's a clear line of separation between the base game and the expansion pack, which now has its own stylish logo and actual title. Ogrepon and Terrapagos look nice off to the side, and the back background is a subtle gradient and paper-like texture. Just like this damn book! The Japanese cases that came out prior... Genuinely, what is this? Why is it just in a bubble here? Why is there so much space just filled in with these tiles? It's neat that they're the Mezagoza tiles, but still... Huh? Oh, and the DLC themselves have their own logos too. Isle of Armor, it's Urshifu combined with a breastplate. Cool. Crown Tundra, Calyrex's head. Okay, same standard font for both. Teal Mask and Indigo Disc, both just stylized text. Oh, and color, whoa. These are the same logos used in Japan. The hidden treasure of Area Zero as a whole, though, has a genuinely neat logo, playing in a Gen 9's book motifs again. There's even these sparkles for a splash of vibrancy. Yeah, and you see when Indigo Disc released? Look who we got in the game. And this one does have a Japanese counterpart. Same shtick as the English one, just, you know, Japanese. And real quick, you know what just got announced? Pokemon Z. Pokemon Legend ZA. We might not have box art yet, but this logo is still a pretty cool twist on what the first game did. The coloring is a lot softer, and even some small details were changed. Like, there's no curve, and the word Legends doesn't have the small points here because Kalos is too sophisticated for that. And ZA itself looks pretty sleek and futuristic. The Z's even got some scales because, yes, indeed, it is Zygarde's time to shine. Even the hyphen has a really, really subtle hint of red and blue in there, probably referencing Zygarde's complete form. Or who knows, it might just be Kanto again. All this along the A even looking a bit like the ultimate weapon means the wait for Pokemon Z was probably worth it, yeah. There are of course logos for the many other languages these games are released in, but they all take after the Japanese and English logos. The French, Italian, German, and Spanish releases should look pretty familiar, while the traditional Chinese, simplified Chinese, and Korean versions should look familiar if you're from Japan. There was an instance though where the Korean logos just kind of had their own thing going on. Okay, they were mostly the Japanese logo, but Diamond and Pearl had a DP in both of them. Ah uh, yes, Pokemon Pearl Diamond Pearl version, and then Platinum had a PT. Oh my god, it came out? Now, there is no doubt in my mind that there's a handful of variants or reprints that I didn't take a look at, but tracking all of those down and then looking at all the tiny differences would be not only impossible, but also boring for both me and you. Like, whoa, did you know on the back of the Pokemon Diamond box in Australia only it says Dialga rules space when no, it doesn't? Yeah, tons of small things. But now that's it. Every Pokemon game's box art has been looked at. Every Pokemon game. All of them. Oh no.